Tears of the Kingdom recently hit its one year anniversary and despite its many flaws, it's still one of my favourite games of all time. I would argue it's better than Breath of the Wild, mainly in terms of the weapon system, characters, combat, making poor and adult, just so many other things I'll save for another video. But if it's one thing both games have in common, it's the speedrunning scenes. These, these are insanely fucking cool to watch. Now, if you don't know what a speedrun looks like, that. Th that, that's a speedrun. You beat X video game as quickly as possible with any means necessary, such as Super Mario Sunshine. It takes on average 15 to 20 hours to complete casually. But with speedrunning, you could beat it in just under an hour and 13 minutes. Well, that 4 is on average 30 hours, and speedrunners managed to beat it in just 35 minutes. On Elder Ring, 60 to 70 hours. 20 minutes to beat. The point is, these games communities and so many other people have completely broken these games apart from the inside. For a game like Breath of the Wild, it took runners years to get some source going. We went from discovering stuff like whistle sprinting, wind bombing, to what we have now as BLSS. The current world record of 23-23 by Player 5, one of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom's top speedrunners. But however, for a game like Tears of the Kingdom, since the game had leaked online almost two weeks before its initial release, people had already been discovering glitches like item duplication, zuggling, gas, rocket pocket, fuse entanglement, bow smuggling, and so many more glitches. With even the first speedrun, which was completed on launch with a time of 1 hour and 34 minutes by Gymnast86. And here we are. Over a year later, time has been knocked from the original 1 hour 30 minutes to just shy of below 40 minutes as of recording this. And I saw some of these runs by Player 5, Moldy Meatball, Limb Cube, and so many more of these runners. I got inspired. I wanted to give it a try and see if I had what it takes to speedrun Tears of the Kingdom. Now, with Tears of the Kingdom, I've beaten the game at least two times, one casually and one to 100%. But my speedrunning experience outside of watching a few runs was minimal to almost zero hours of knowledge on my own. There were three contenders I had for runs I wanted to go for. You have 1.0.0, which is the run that anyone could get if they never updated the game and have the game physically. 1.2.1, which is the current and probably the last update we'll ever get for the game. And you have Glitchless, which is the longest. Now 1.0.0 is probably the best one for speedrunning as you have access to almost every glitch I previously discussed. 1.2.1 basically removed the ability to do any of these old glitches. And <laughs> glitches is just straight ass, like, god bless you if you do this category. And so, with little to no experience, on the 22nd of April 2024, I started practicing. Tears of the Kingdom 1.2.1, any percent. But day one I had to come up with a route, as by this point, I was unaware some of the tricks could be done in 1.2.1. So I went based off the glitchless route, which involved beating GSI, gliding to Hyrule Castle, getting the essential equipment, gliding down the Hyrule Castle chasms to reach the depths, killing the Lionel with a soldier spear fused with a diamond, which we gathered while preparing, running through the rest of the chasm, and landing two precise wall jumps to get to the army fight. Beating the army, killing all the bosses, and then killing Ganon and Demon King? Oh, and by the way, you have to do this all with one heart. As the weapon you pick up, the Soldier Spear, has a built-in perk of giving critical hits if you're on your last heart. But for now, I wasn't too worried about what was going to happen. I had to worry about... Now, this room's quite notorious in the Tears of the Kingdom speedrunning scene, as this room can either make or break a run completely. So, in a casual playthrough, you would activate the cogs on your left, which opens the door, you run through the area and go to... The title screen. We instead don't open the door. Instead, we make our way to the broken cogs on our right, get into a specific angle, turn ourselves around, hold B, run, jump, press R to throw our weapon, and press Y to do essentially a scout TF2 double jump to just barely make it to the broken bit of wall, which elevates us to skip everything in this room. Now, while I'll explain that in about, I don't know, 10 seconds, all those actions combined take about one to three seconds to do. Now, for 1.2.1, failing this trick isn't so bad. All you do is just reload the save you already made before picking up the decayed Master Sword and just give it another try on a normal run. No pain, no gain. But for 1.0.0 runners, if you're doing a run and fail cog skip, you've got to start from the beginning, like beneath Hyrule Castle beginning and watch the four minute unskippable cutscene every single time. Blow. But we don't have to worry about that because we aren't playing that version. So <laughs> once I began getting more consistent and more comfortable with cog skip, which I never did by the time I was done practicing, I tried to see how long it would take me to beat the rest of GSI. Once doing cog skip, you would get to the top of the Room of Awakening, duplicate wings. Thankfully, there's still a way to do it in 1.2. Then go to the... Get the Pura Pad as normal, then make our way to the Temple of Time, but instead of activating the bridge, running through the woods, climbing the broken steps, and activating the door, we go to the left of the construct, backflip, and drop a wing, jump slash onto the wing, and fly to Temple of Time and activate the door as normal. Then, 
jump off the side without touching the floor, then hopefully, if you did it all correctly, you will respawn back to the construct that gives you the Pura Pad. If you fail this, the runner is more or less dead at this point, as the best path of speedrunning is Ascend, Fuse, and then Ultra Hand. If you're wondering why we don't do the Recall Shrine to start after doing Cog Skip, it's because the shrines aren't activated by that point. And even if you can clip into it, it's not, it's not activated. But after making our way through the ice area and beating Ascend, I had to head to the side of the shrine and do another backflip wing drop to make a straight beeline towards the Fuse Shrine, which in that shrine, we prepare a shield bomb, which we picked up on our way to Ascend. Once finishing Fuse, we finish Ultra Hand, then head back to the Temple of Time, open the door, teleport to, and finish the Recall Shrine. Give Zelda the Master Sword and... Well, this is where the first and second days of this run kind of seem a bit odd. So, in most instances of 1.2.1, you would normally have a full stack of bows, a shield with a Zono wing attached to it, and one weapon in one room by the time you finish GSI. It's out for a glitch we do later called Bow Smuggle. But once again, for the first two days, I was unaware of Bow Smuggle being a thing in 1.2.1. So this is what I did. We'll grab Council at Hyrule Castle, go into the Royal Hidden Passage and grab a Diamond, Soldier Spear, and make my way to the Lionel down in the depths. Which, killing the Lionel is essentially required. The problem. It took me just under one hour to kill the Lionel, as I had no idea what I was doing after killing it. I made my way through the Ice Keys and like likes, killed the Silver Lazolfo, awaiting at the bottom of the drop, attached the cannon to the Lionel Shield, made my way through the Beneath Hyrule Castle area, made the two drops and killed the army stuff. You know, the stuff we talked about uh, like five minutes ago. Yeah, that took me about two hours just to get to the drop. And by then, I didn't even know what I had to do. I had no weapons, no expectations, and no paraglider to land on the army fight. And then... Right, as soon as we enter army, I think that's like where I'll be... I'll give it a try. Uh. Oh! That's not even how you do it! I don't even know what the hell I did, but I just did it. Alright, that's... That's a stamp right there. 30 minutes. Okay, I don't know what you do from this point, but I know you do stuff. I just don't know what that stuff is. That's not even the... Oh. Whatever. I don't care. I got to army. I think I'm content with that. Yeah, so it was short-lived, but day one was just really laying the groundwork. And hell, save us the time. Our second day was basically the same as day one, but we got to the army fight by one hour and 41 minutes. And this is where the route changed completely. This is Evan Goated 6. And honestly, if it wasn't for Evan, I wouldn't, wouldn't be, be sitting, sitting here, here discussing it with you now, would I? While I was trying to learn this route, Evan came through and suggested to me to try and learn bow smuggle with the new path using the well just outside Haro Castle. And since I was still new to the route, I wanted to give it some practice. And well, after practicing and 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 practicing started getting it more and more consistently until I knew I was finally ready to try it in a run. Now, with Bow Smuggle locked in, I had to change the route completely. So instead of going through the chasm and doing all the stuff we did previously, we now beat GSI, making sure we have a full stack of bows and at least one arrow, making sure we get a ruby as well. Once beating GSI, we make our way to Hyrule Castle and duplicate the ruby at least 17 times for the army fight, and we get ready for Bow Smuggle. I would go into detail on how to set up Bow Smuggle on 1.2.1, but that is going to take up so much time, so I'll likely just make a separate video on that. But once getting Bow Smuggle set up, we do infinite jumps through the walls to the walls in between, swim over to the edge of the water, and take a swan dive to the depths. Now, one important thing, if you die here, you go back to your previous save, which if that happens, you lose your bow smuggle, which effectively kills the whole run again. Once you've taken the army fight, there is only one more thing left to do. Skip cool gear. Now, thankfully, we can just do that by going under the arena. We can use bow smuggle to clip inside the arena and make our way to the Ganon fight, because for some reason, only during the boss rush, Ganondorf has spawned in at all times for God knows why, but it, it makes sub two hour runs possible, so I'm not even going to complain. One thing I forgot to mention, during the army fight, you're going to want to pick up three royal spears and one black Lazolfo horn and duplicate it for the Ganon fight, as royal weapons give bonus damage while flurry rushing. And we're doing a lot of that for the Ganon fight, don't worry. But after everything we have gone through, all we have left is to beat Ganondorf and the demon dragon. Ganon is easy if you have good timing, but then you have the most bullshit, stupid, dumb, stupid, bullshit, fucking... Get Demon Dragon. Now, on a casual playthrough, this is one of the easiest bosses of the entire game. It's literally just Breath of the Wild's final boss, but you're in the sky. 
but we don't have a paraglider. And depending on how dedicated you are to getting the perfect timing, this can take either two to three minutes if you're experienced, or seven to eight minutes if you aren't like me. But after spending what felt like hours of fighting the demon dragon... No, no, dude, dude. Be cool, be chill. Yes! That's it. You kill the demon dragon, grab Zelda's hand, and you're done. Woo. You have finished your first ever Tears of the Kingdom speedrun. And so, after practicing for as long as I had been, I went for a real run and got the run of my life. Yeah, so it turns out I wasn't quite ready to do a real run just yet, meaning I had to go back to the drawing board and try and optimize my run. Nah, fuck that shit, dude. The next day I went back and did a real run. Yes. Yes. Still really shit, run, But you know, I don't even care, dude. I don't even, I can't get flying. Damn, what you Oh, wait, hang on. One, two, two, one. Sorry. Didn't do it at the beginning. I'll do it now. That still probably should validate the run. And just like that, after a good five days of constant work, dedication, we finally got our first completed run of 1 hour 17 and 44 seconds. Now, while feeling happy about this 1 hour 17 run, I, I was so happy about it. I tried to submit it to speedrun.com, but it got declined. Confused as to why it didn't get accepted, it's because this run wasn't done from a fresh boot up. So that makes it as fair as possible, which honestly, I was mad as fuck about, but you know what? It's fair enough. So I said, fuck that shit and went for a retake of my previous run to try and get an even better run and went for the truly best run of my life. Yes. This is fucking boring. Ah, uh, so with that, I went from a 117.44 to a beautiful 109.22, an almost 10 minute time save thanks to the better movement, quicker clipping, and just being fucking cool, dude, like, I don't know. And since I started from a fresh boot, this one actually got accepted on speedrun.com. And since this was also a no amiibo run, this run puts me in the top 10 in the world for 1.2.1, no amiibo. And hey, you know what? If you guys want me to try and do more videos like this, please just do all the things that content creators ask you to do at the end of the video. And hey, as usual, I don't have a way to end these videos, so this one's no exception. Bye! What the hell is that? Holy crap! It's a Yeti! And he's throwing snowballs at me! Back off, beast! Oh, I got a gun under my seat!